Good morning and welcome to BVTV. Over the last few years, with lower returns coming from bonds, many investors have been looking more and more into currencies. So today I will try to do something slightly different than usual. I will discuss currencies and in particular the key factors we take into account when trading currencies. Of course there are many different things to consider, but I will try to summarize them in three main areas. Carry, valuations and fundamentals. Let's start with the carry. When you buy a bond, you get a coupon, and when you buy a stock, you typically get a dividend. Well, the same applies to currencies. You get a carry. The carry can be either positive or negative, depending on the interest rates differential. Say, for example, you buy the Mexican peso versus the dollar. In this case, you will get a positive carry, as interest rates in Mexico are higher than the ones in the US. So the carry is something very important when you think about currencies, as it tells you how much cushion you have. Let's give an example here. Think about the Turkish Lira, a currency that has been under pressure for quite a while now. If you invested in this currency last year, your spot return would have been minus 7%. But your carry was actually plus 11%, so your total return was positive, plus 4.5% to be precise. What's the level of carry available in the market today? Have a look at this chart. It shows you one year carry for a number of currencies. Today we can find some very interesting levels of carry, particularly in emerging markets. Argentina, for example, offers today a carry of around 30%. The second thing to consider when investing in currencies is valuations. Is the currency overvalued or undervalued? There are some easy and some more complicated ways to determine that. A quick and easy way would be to look at the real yield. This is positive if the bond in that currency is compensating you for the risk of inflation. Generally a good sign to invest in that currency. There are also other more sophisticated ways to determine whether a currency is over or undervalued. You can look, for example, at the real effective exchange rate or the behavioral effective exchange rate and many others. In the chart appearing now on the screen, you can see the real yield, the green bars, and top right, a spiral chart produced by Deutsche Bank combining some of the indices I just mentioned. According to this analysis, the cheapest currency in the world today is the Japanese yen, while the most expensive is the Chinese renminbi. The last thing to consider when investing in currencies is fundamentals. There are many things here that could drive a currency. Tourism, for example, is a key factor, particularly for some smaller economies. Or commodities, currencies such as the Russian ruble or the Colombian peso are strongly correlated to the oil price. Other things could of course drive currencies, but arguably the key things to look at here are central banks' rates expectations, the current account, the fiscal account and the capital account. A very negative current fiscal or capital account generally suggests the currency is vulnerable. If we focus on emerging market currencies, fundamentals here have been improving over the last few years, particularly since 2013, when we had the famous taper tantrum. Look at the so-called fragile five economies. The current account in these economies has been improving over the last few years. The only exception here is Turkey, where the currency remains very much under pressure. Recently, some other emerging market currencies have also come under pressure, mainly because of the stronger dollar and political uncertainty. But the fundamental pictures remain supportive and many emerging market currencies today actually offer good valuation and a very positive carry. So if you can handle some volatility, the recent weakness in this market could therefore be seen as an opportunity to add some currency risk. Well, this is it from my side. Thanks for tuning in and have a nice day.